guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen. And today I have 11 uh, embarrassing confessions of an American who lives in the UK. So let's get started. Number one, I have been trapped in so many buildings in this country because I didn't realize that you had to press a button to open the door to let you out. So I feel like this is common in like schools and maybe like at the GP or in kind of like not homes, obviously, this is for my audience who don't live in the UK. British people are like, you don't have to explain this to me. But the buttons look like this, and often they say press to exit, but if you don't know that you're looking for it, you often don't know why you can't open the door to let yourself out of somewhere. So I really have spent a lot of times just standing at a door that I feel like is locked, trying to open it, not realizing I have to press this button, typically green, to exit. Now. I have no idea what is behind these buttons. We don't really do this in the States, which is why it was uncommon for me here. So I feel like I should do a video researching why these buttons exist, because there's gonna be some sort of like planning reason or code reasons. I don't know, I will get to the bottom of it, but that is my confession. Sometimes to this day, I forget they exist until some like receptionist yells behind me that I need to press the button. Number two. The first and last time I've ever parallel parked in my life was on my UK driving test. I'm not even sure I had done it successfully before the driving test. I was just hoping that it went well because it basically went wrong. Every time I learned how to do it, I learned how to drive in Florida. We drive very differently, not very well. Um, I will bring this up in another video, but on my initial driving test, I only had to go in forwards into a space not even back into it. And parallel parking just isn't something that Floridians do. It's not something that a lot of people in America do because unless you live in a more built up area, it's just like, we just have big parking lots. You don't need to be parallel parking. Um, here in the UK, you have to parallel park a lot, but I am not very good at it. And so I just um, don't do it. And you're like, but what happens if you run into a situation where you have to parallel park? I'm like, no, no, there's no situation where you have to parallel park. You can park 20 minutes away from where you need to be and walk. And that's basically what I do. Number three, I thought mince pies had meat in them for a very long time. Now they call it mince meat here to refer to multiple different things. I think mince meat can be like this fruity concoction, but it can also refer to like mince as in the meat that is minced that you put into recipes. And I thought modern day mince pies had meat in them because mince to me seemed to suggest meat. Turns out that's not true. Um, but I definitely thought that for a very long time that people were offering me some sort of meat pie instead of like a dessert fruit filled pie. Number four, I didn't actually know much about the geography of the UK before I moved here. And I will admit that. I was 19 doing a study abroad program in London. I knew London was in England and England was in the UK. Um, but they gave us a map on our first or second day of orientation and they had us try and label uh, the different countries, the dividing lines between the countries. There were dots on the map for major cities. Didn't answer, couldn't answer any of it. And yes, this is on me. Yes, I was a dumb 19 year old American um, who was going to a foreign country without much knowledge. Um, I'm proud to say that today I have a pretty good grasp on geography in the UK, um, including what countries there are and where they're located. But my confession is when I first moved here, I didn't. I'm sorry, it was really overwhelming anyway to think about going to a foreign country much less trying to figure out the exact geography is where, of where I was going. So I pretty much just got on the plane, got to London, and then figured the rest out once I got here. Okay, the next one also has to do with driving. So I don't like turning right in the UK often if I have to cross both lanes of traffic. Because in America, when we're driving, we often have a median in the middle that has space to um, to sit in to wait for the next lane of traffic. So for instance, if I'm trying to pull out of a road and I need to cross two lanes of traffic, um, so in America it would be to turn left, in the UK it's to turn right. 
um, we would usually have like a large ish waiting lane or area in the middle that can be used to go halfway across. Um, and then when the other side is clear, then you can go. That's what I was used to. Here in the UK, that's not usually the case. You need to wait for both ways to be clear before you can make that right hand turn. Um, and usually it just, I feel too much pressure. I feel like people are behind me being like, why isn't this girl going? I'm not entirely sure, like, I'm not that great of a driver, you guys. This is my confession. Um, so sometimes, instead of turning on to a right, instead of turning right um, across traffic, I'll just turn left, and go to the nearest roundabout, and turn myself around there. It's way less stressful. There's usually a roundabout nearby to help me turn myself around. And I feel like everyone on the road with me actually should thank me um, for going the extra mile or however much to avoid the stress of me turning um, into traffic trying to turn right. Okay, next on my list, and sorry, I just got like really dark in here. The weather's changed outside. It's been 10 minutes. You know how it goes. Um, I'm scared of trying tartar sauce, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Is it tartar sauce or tartar sauce? This is typically eaten with fish and chips. I don't even know what it is really. I've just been too scared to try it. Number seven, I used to not understand how radiators worked or how hot they would get. And I used to think that if you left clothes drying on them, then somehow once the clothes dried, this could like start a fire. I think this is false. Enough people on the internet have told me this is false. I wouldn't recommend leaving stuff on the radiator if you're not home. And maybe the UK's firefighters can educate me in this video. Um, but I don't think radiators get hot enough to like set your socks on fire. But I'd never experienced a radiator before I moved here. We don't have them in Florida. We don't have them in a lot of the US. Um, we typically have like, we call it an HVAC system, uh, which is heating and air conditioning in one system that has to do with like hot air as opposed to heat coming from the radiators. So it was completely new to me. So I was a radiator newbie, didn't really understand like w how I should use it because I feel like everybody uses it to like make their clothes extra toasty or dry them. And I just thought this was a big risk. Now I do it, my house hasn't burned down yet, but again, comment below and let me know if I should be doing this or not. Number eight, I am terrible at using reward cards. I have them for places like Asda, Tesco, Co-op. Everyone has their own reward card and I don't just shop at one place. Um, and I am just really terrible at using them. Like I think I'm signed up, but I don't remember where it is on my phone because half the time they won't even give you like a card these days. It's like a barcode on my phone, which is like buried in the depths of whatever else is on my phone. And I always am the person who goes up to the register, can't find my card, doesn't remember, don't remember that I have a rewards card. And it's like a life goal of mine to be, to be the person that's always ready with my reward um, card so I can get like 3P back at Tesco. But so far that has not happened. Next confession, I don't, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna turn the internet against me. I'm open to changing my mind, but I don't like garden centers. I think I'm too, well, I would say I think I'm too young for them still, but that might be offensive. I just, there's something about a garden center. I know it's like a British institution. I'm going to do a whole video about them. People love a garden center. I don't love gardening, number one. So the actual like stuff sold in a garden center that it's named after, mostly not interested in. Um, so that could be problem number one. But then also a lot of them have like cafes and other stuff besides gardening tools. And I don't know, I just, I don't like the vibe of a garden center. And this is going to be the comment I know that I get from so many of you who, I mean, do tell, tell me your thoughts about garden centers because I am going to do a video about them. And like I said, I'm not saying that I don't understand why people like them. I just think it's not for me. So please stay subscribed. Next confession is clothes shopping in the UK is sad for me because 
the size equivalents in the US mean that in the UK, so for instance, it's about four apart in women's sizing. So if you wear an eight in the UK and you shop for an eight, you would go to the US, look for your size, and the equivalent would be a four. So when you're an American moving from America to the UK, also it is getting very like, I feel like something bad is about to happen. No, it's not, it's fine, it's cozy. You can still see me. Um, when you move from America to the UK, you basically have to go up four in sizes for the same clothes. So if, if again, if I used to wear a four, whatever it is, now in the UK, I wear an eight. I'm telling you, no woman wants to go shopping and instantly to buy the same piece of clothing be an extra four sizes up. Um, so I often still do my clothes shopping in America because it makes me feel better. Okay, the last confession is it has taken me years. I mean, years, probably only in the last two or so, and I've lived here 10 years, to be able to look at a 24 hour time and understand what hour we're talking about without having to subtract 12. So for instance, like if you put this on the screen, previously I would have to subtract 12 in my head to, to do the math to be like, okay, we're talking about two o'clock. I couldn't just automatically without thinking, look at that and understand what time it was. I mean, that's a little bit of an easier example, but once you get like later in the times, like this time, um, again, I would have to like subtract 12 from 21 to figure out that we're talking about nine because we don't use that time formatting in America. We call it military time and they do use it within like the military and other professional ways, but we don't use it in society to talk about time. Um, so it really has taken me some time to get used to, and I'm not saying that I couldn't figure it out before, I'm not that dumb, but it wasn't as instant as it is now, just understanding that 21 is nine or 14 is two. I'd have to just take a split second to like figure it out. Okay, that brings me to the end of this video. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. Comment below on all of your reactions to the embarrassing confessions I've made about my life in the UK, and I will see you next time.